Kia ora, year 12 and 13. This is question one from the sample paper back in 2013. I'm going to do all um, five sections of question one, so um, apologies if this gets a little bit long. Okay, the first one. Um, find the integral of these two functions here. Okay, so the first one, we're going to simplify that. and We'll get x squared plus 5 on x dx. So that equals one third of x cubed plus five ln of x plus c. Right, you even get told not to forget the plus c. Right, the next one is a simple trig integral that you need to spot from looking at your formula sheet. If f of x is sec x, then f dash of x is sec x tan x. So in this case, the integral is going to be sec of 4x. Um, if I differentiated that by the chain rule, I'd get 4 sec 4x tan 4x. And I don't want that, so it's going to be 1 quarter sec of 4x plus c. Okay, on to part b. Right, so a kinematics question. Um, an object's acceleration is given by this formula here. All right. A is the acceleration, and T is the time in seconds since the start of the object's motion. Okay. If the object had a velocity of 4 after 3 seconds, so V of 3 is equal to 4, how far did it travel between T equals 5 and T equals 6? Okay. So what we're looking at here is figuring out S of 6 minus S of 5. Okay, um, that's one way to think about it, and that's the way I'm going to do it here. Um, the other way you could do it is by saying, well, hang on, S is just uh, the, anti the antiderivative of velocity, so I could work it out like this. Right, and you'll get the same thing, because, well, I can talk about that more in class. In the interest of time, I'm just going to get on with it. So, V of T is the first thing we're going to find, so we anti-differentiate acceleration with respect to t, and that gives me 0.8t plus, well it'll still be e to the 0.2t, if I differentiate that I'll get 0.2, but I want to get 0.4, so it's going to be 2e to the 0.2t plus c. Now, we know that v of 3 equals 4, and so we can work out the plus c. So we get 4 is equal to 0 0.8 times 3 plus 2 e to the 0 0.6 plus c. So that gives me, just working with this bit and this bit, let's see, uh, 1.6 equals 2 e to the 0.6 plus C. Now if I pop that in my calculator, I'll get C is equal to 1.6 minus 2E to the 0.6, and that equals negative 2.04. Okay, now I'm cheating here, I'm actually just reading that number off the schedule, so I haven't checked all the rounding and everything, but that should, that should be right. So that gives me my velocity function. I'm going to insert a new slide, and we'll do the rest of the question. Okay, so we get V of t is equal to 0.8t plus 2e to the 0.2t minus 2.04. Right, so now we can get s of t, which is this. And so that will be 0.4t squared plus, again I'll have my e to the 0.2t, Let's see, 0.2, so this is going to be 10 now, 10e to the 0.2t minus 2.04t plus c. Um, we know though that um, at 0, the object had not moved, so s of 0 equals 0. So be careful here, what does that give us? Uh, 0 is equal to... 0 plus 10 minus 0 plus c. 
So C is equal to negative 10. S of 6 is equal to 0.4 times 36 plus 10e to the 0.12. Whoops, that's wrong. Sorry, 1.2 minus 12.24 minus 10. S of 5 is going to equal 0.4 times 25 plus 10 e to the power of 1 minus 10 point, let's see, I'm doing this in my head, 10.2 minus 10. Now I'm relying on you guys to tell me if I've mucked any of those calculations up um, because my calculator is downstairs and I'm upstairs. But the reason I'm not figuring those all out is what we're asked to work out is um, how far it went between t equals 5 and t equals 6. So a whole lot of stuff is going to cancel out here. And we're going to have 0.4 times 11 plus 10 times this minus 12.24 plus 10 Point two. Okay, I'm just going to pause and pop that into my calculator. Okay, and that gives me 8.38. I'll just put that in up here in a different colour. Okay, so it equals 8.38. So that's just using Excel. Alright, so that's that question done. So that's a merit question. Um, let's go on to the next one. Alright, find this integral here. So 4x times the root of x squared plus 3dx. So I'm going to start by rewriting that as 4x times x squared plus 3 to the 1 half dx. Some of you will be comfortable doing this by the reverse chain rule by inspection and some of you will probably want to do um, substitution on this. Okay, so I'm going to do this using substitution. So let's let u equal x squared plus 3. So du by dx is equal to 2x. So we can write du equals 2x dx. So now we're just about good to go with the rewriting. Um, I'm doing a little thing here where I'm recognizing that I've got the 4x and the dx here. So that's going to speed my working up a little bit. So this equals the integral of 2 times 2x dx times the root of that. Now I'm going to rewrite it with the u's in it. So I'm going to get 2u to the power of a half times the 2x, 2x dx is my du. Okay, so now we can anti-differentiate that. And look what we're going to get. We'll get u to the power of 3 over 2 times 4 thirds. Okay, but I've got to make sure I remember to add in. I'll add in my plus c. Oop, pen's gone funny. Plus c there. And now I can't leave it with the u. I have to go back in and I have to substitute back in this back here down to the end. So it's 4 thirds times this. The square root of x squared plus 3 cubed plus c. Or if you really don't want to write it like that, you could write it like this. 4 thirds of x squared plus 3 to the 3 over 2 plus c. Now some of you will have been quite happy doing that by going, okay, we'll look at that function there. Look, my um, chain rule is going to give me a 2x as the derivative of the inside function, which is closely related to the 4x. So um, I'm thinking probably at least half the class are probably going to go straight to that. That's fine. If you do it that way, just make sure that you've checked it back by differentiating. Okay, and lastly, we're going to take a look at the excellence question, which has got a little familiar trig identity lurking in it. Here it is. All right, so this is a, a trig question, and we're looking for the area between two curves. There are several ways to do this, but I think probably the nicest way is the way that's done in the schedule, which says we can see by symmetry and by looking at the functions, that that area there is the same as this area here. 
The reason I like doing it like this is because we're going to have to find our limits of integration. And if one of them's at zero, life gets a little bit easier. Okay, what's this limit here going to be? So where is sine squared of kx going to equal cos squared of kx? Well, if we take square roots of both sides, and we've got to be a bit careful doing that, but that'll give us a start on the solution. I get sine of kx equals cos of kx. So what value is that going to work on? Well, k of x is going to equal pi on 4. Remember, I'm just looking for the first solution here. I don't need to do any general solutions. So x is equal to pi divided by 4k. So by symmetry, that value there would have been negative pi on 4k. But actually, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to work with 0 and pi on 4k. I'm thinking about which curve is which. Um, sine of 0 is 0. So sine squared of 0 is 0. So this bottom curve is the sine squared. And this top curve is the cos squared. So what we've got to do to find the shaded area is we've got to find two lots of the red coloured in bit. So it's 2 times pi on 4k and 0 as my limits. And then let's see what we've got. Well, the top curve is cos squared of kx minus sine squared of kx. All right? Integrated with respect to x. Now, if you look at that and you can't remember what to do, remember whenever we see a trig function squared, we think back to our favourite trig identity, cos of 2x. And there are three versions. 1 minus 2 sine squared x, no use. 2 cos squared x minus 1. And the last one, which happily is going to help, which is cos squared of x minus sine squared of x. So that's what we're going to use here. All right, so we're going to figure this out. I'm going to put that onto a new slide now. So this equals 2 times the integral of pi on 4k to 0 of cos of 2 kx dx. So we've done some pretty nice simplifying to get to that point. Let's see what we're going to do now. Okay, so we can leave that 2 sitting outside the integral. And here I've got sine of 2kx. I'm looking at that and I'm going, yep, sine will differentiate to give me cos. But I'm going to have a multiplier of 2k. I don't want that. So it's going to be 1 over 2k down there. Looking good. And then we've got pi on 4k here and 0 here. We can simplify that a little bit. Uh, we can take this constant term through and we get 2 over 2k times the integral of sine 2kx pi on 4k and 0. So that will be 2 over 2k times sine, well what have we got, sine of 2k pi on 4k. Let's just check that that's right. Yep, we're substituting this in. So that's going in there, and there's my 2k. So that equals 1 over k times sine of pi on 2. Sine of pi on 2 is 1, so that whole thing is equal to 1 over k. Now you're probably going, oh, she's mucked up. She's forgotten about the bottom part of the integral. No, I haven't, because I did that a little bit too fast in my head. Sine of 0 is always 0, so that just falls off. In that problem. Okay, so that's it for question one, um, and that was an excellent question. So really, all you've got to do to, to do well in that is you have to think about all the little bits separately. So let's just go over how it went. I think that's, a, that's completely the wrong picture. Let's try that again. Hmm. We're using symmetry. That's the first thing that's helping us, so that's why we've got the two thing. We're finding where the curve meets, but we only have to do that once by symmetry. So our limits are zero in that. And then the last thing that we did is we used our trig identities to simplify what we're, what we're integrating. Okay, um, I'll do questions in two and three later on tonight. Thanks very much for your patience, and sorry this was very, very long.